okay so this is uh, lecture 12 of this course and today we are going to talk about the interacting formulas so let's uh, take a little uh, little review of what we did in the previous uh, lecture so we discussed uh, the Dirac Hamiltonian this is what we discussed then we discussed the commutation relation okay h a p alpha is equal to minus e p a p alpha these are things we discussed okay we also looked at the canonical uh, commutation relation here actually anti-commutation relation and what we have over here that psi of x the three vectors so this is a Schrodinger picture guy a psi tiger b at y is going to be delta 3 x minus y times delta a b okay and all other commutators are zero between psi and psi and psi dagger and psi dagger here psi dagger we note that psi dagger okay so pi of psi was i times psi dagger okay so this is what we had so starting from here we found that uh, our, our Dirac Hamiltonian actually describes a free fermion we found out its commutator all these commutator uh, anti-commutators and then we also had um, we also discussed the propagator okay so propagator fine propagator actually s f x minus y okay this is what we saw and uh, that was equal to zero psi bar sorry psi of x this is psi of x psi bar of y if x naught is greater than y naught and it is minus zero psi bar of y psi of x Okay. for x less than y x not less than y naught it's a time ordered thing so in other words we basically write this as a time ordered guy so what we are listing over here from l11 so this is what we had okay now let's move on to some of the topics that we are going to discuss today so we had to go for so that was the free uh, fermion and the propagator of the free fermion the vacuum uh, that was defined was a free fermionic vacuum no interaction and we know that the interaction actually changes the vacuum this is you must have learned uh, in qft1 itself so here what we are going to see is that how many ways we can write the fermion interactions and here we are going to take help of two things one is the chiral projections this is going to be very very useful while writing the interactions uh, although the chirality is not a good quantum number for massive uh, uh, fermions but we're still going to use the chiral projections of the full spinner okay and then we are going to use all our uh, fermion bilinears the five different kind of fermion bilinears that we have uh, discussed in the past and we use those to describe the interacting Hamiltonian okay so first we say that psi of x can be written very simply as 1 plus gamma 5 by 2 times psi of x plus 1 minus gamma 5 by 2 acting on psi of x now you can expand gamma 5 by 2 gamma 5 by 2 cancels out and 1 by 2 1 by becomes 1 and that is a psi of x 
so this is just another way of writing psi of x and this I can write as psi right chiral of x so this and, and plus psi left chiral of x so let me put this thing so this is defined to be this this is the definitions okay and once we have this okay obviously I will say that psi bar is going to be psi bar of r plus psi l bar okay you just take this psi take a conjugate of that and then multiply on the right hand side by gamma zero okay so what is my psi r bar okay if i have to write and i will say this is nothing but psi of r tiger times gamma zero now what is psi of uh, r tiger it is nothing but psi tiger times 1 plus gamma 5 by 2 tiger whole thing tiger but gamma 5 tiger is gamma 5 so i'm gonna use just this i'll write it gamma 5 tiger is equal to gamma 5 okay so because of this this remains as it is and then multiply by gamma 0 okay and so gamma 0 and gamma 5 will anti commute so when i take this gamma 0 to the left hand side what i get is psi bar 1 minus gamma 5 by 2 this is what i get so psi bar r is related to psi bar with this projection operator of 1 minus gamma 5 by 2 and likewise psi bar of l the chiral projection taken the uh, and the bar indicates the Dirac conjugate will be psi l tiger gamma zero which is again following these steps would be psi bar one plus gamma five by two okay so these are the relations that will be useful in, in writing what i'm gonna write so psi is decomposed into the two chiral decompositions two chiral components using the projection operator one plus gamma five by two and one minus gamma five by two they project a given spinner into two orthogonal subspaces and each subspace is still two-dimensional okay and uh, now here uh, we move on to writing the possible interaction okay so what are the possible interaction one can write so let's recall what we have uh, from uh, from the bilinears okay so we have a scalar bilinear okay so we first write that interactions can be written using the bilinears so let's consider the first one psi bar psi is the one of the first bilinear that's the scalar okay and this scalar must couple to some another scalar field let me call it phi okay so this is this could this is one interaction term okay this operator so this is 3 by 2 in mass dimension 3 by 2 in mass dimension 1 in mass dimension equal to 4 mass dimension in, in four dimensions okay so this is a very nice term to talk about in uh, in a f interacting f uh, field theory so there here is a pair of fermions is interacting with a scalar okay uh, let me get rid of this dimensions thing over here that's not relevant for this discussion so psi bar l and psi bar r we can write as psi bar l plus psi bar r times psi l plus psi r whole thing multiplied with a phi now of course this can be written as psi bar l apologies psi l plus psi bar l psi r plus psi bar r psi l plus psi bar r psi r whole thing multiplying a phi okay now let's take a little thing over here so we know the definition of what psi l is in terms of projection operator it is 1 minus gamma 5 by 2 okay so if i write psi bar l 
psi l so the second psi l is just psi sitting on the here and 1 minus gamma 5 by 2 operator that's it here this is my psi l okay so what is my psi bar l that we have just computed it is psi bar to the left hand side and 1 plus gamma 5 by 2 now 1 plus gamma 5 by 2 and 1 minus gamma 5 by 2 are two orthogonal projectors so the product is 0 you can actually multiply it and see that what you'll get is 1 minus gamma 5 square by 4 okay and gamma 5 square is 1 so 1 minus gamma 5 square is just 1 minus 1 so it is 0 so this will be 0 and so will be psi bar r psi r using the exact same argument okay here of course the two projectors will change their positions the first one will be psi l second will be psi r so uh, sorry first projection will be the left handed projection second projection will be right handed projection and they are orthogonal so we will uh, not be able to uh, have a non-zero contribution from there so basically what we are saying is that this guy goes to zero and this guy goes to zero so what we have over here is psi bar l psi r plus psi bar r psi l whole thing multiplying the phi okay so whenever we have a scalar interacting with a pair of fermions we see that the chirality is getting mixed right it connects a left chiral fermion with a left right chiral anti fermion the chirality mixing happens if we have the scalar interaction this is a very important thing when we are doing phenomenology in particle physics okay for a massive particle the chirality uh, mixing will happen i'm sorry the, for, for the uh, for any particle the chirality mixing will happen because here we have not, not made any assumption about the particle being massive or massless so scalar interaction will mix the chirality of the fermions so if uh, the fermion uh is massless so you you know that this exact same term appears in the lagrangian when we have mass so instead of phi we have some constant m which is the mass of the fermion so we can say that mass of the fermion is actually a term that mixes the chirality two different chiral uh, components interact with each other through the mass term okay so uh, this is one piece of information that we have let's move on to the next uh, scalar like term that is uh, psi bar gamma phi psi times as just for simplicity i write phi still and uh, the gamma phi is, makes it uh, this particular bilinear not scalar but a pseudo scalar and that can be written as psi l bar plus psi r bar times gamma phi psi l plus psi r okay now here again i will use this property of uh, gamma 5 acting on psi l what does it do so it does gamma 5 acting on 1 minus gamma 5 by 2 psi right this is how gamma 5 uh, oh, sorry psi l is defined now when i multiply this what do i get i get gamma 5 minus 1 by to psi just the full component psi okay and that is minus psi l similarly gamma 5 acting on psi r is nothing but psi r okay so what i would do over here I will act by gamma 5 onto the right hand side and uh, write this thing as uh, psi bar l minus psi Sorry, plus and gamma 5 acting on this gamma 5 disappears just the sign change happens because the left and right chiral fermions component of the fermions are eigenstates of gamma 5 with a plus or minus eigenvalue so this becomes psi l plus psi r whole thing multiplied by phi and again we get four terms and the only terms that will survive are the one that mixed because psi l times psi bar l times psi r is zero as we saw from the previous slide over here okay so here psi l psi l is zero so i will not write those terms so what i'm going to write is psi bar l psi r minus psi bar r psi l 
times phi this is also mixing the chirality and uh, if i want to write it back in terms of gamma 5 reintroducing then i know minus psi l is nothing but gamma 5 times psi l and here psi r i can write as gamma 5 times psi r so i'm going to write it as a psi bar l gamma 5 psi r this first term as it is plus psi bar r gamma 5 psi l times phi okay so modulo the fact that there is a gamma 5 in between what it is doing that is taking a left chiral fermion and they're taking another right chiral for anti fermion okay and mixing them so again the pseudo scalar coupling over here so here phi is actually a pseudo scalar maybe okay let me not use too many notations okay so whether it is a scalar or a pseudo scalar both has spin zero particles so when a spin zero particle couples to uh, a pair of fermions it will always uh, mix the left and right chiral uh, uh, components of the fermion okay. now let's go to the another bilinear of the fermion that we have uh, studied and that happens to be psi bar gamma mu psi the vector part and that let's just say couples to some a mu where a mu typically in electromagnetic theory is going to be the potential okay and the four com four potential of the electromagnetic field so this will be psi bar l l plus psi r bar gamma mu psi l plus psi r and a mu again there will be four terms okay and here itself let me just write there will be one of the term which says psi bar l gamma mu psi r a term would like this would be there okay so what this term would be it, it will give me so from previous slide i know the psi bar l is nothing but psi bar 1 plus gamma 5 by 2 then comes gamma mu and what is psi r it is 1 plus gamma 5 by 2 psi okay note on both side of gamma mu setting 1 plus gamma 5 by 2 now what i do i take gamma mu either to the left or to the right whichever way it's convenient okay actually both i will give the same result so let me just say gamma few 5 i bring to the left closer to psi bar so what i'm trying to do let me just view no that is fine so what i will do over here yeah so i am gonna write this guy psi bar this is equal to psi bar gamma mu i brought gamma mu to the left so it gave me one minus gamma five because gamma mu and take commutes with gamma five and 1 plus gamma 5 by 2 psi now again this is the orthogonal guys so that gives me 0 and the same thing you will get if you try to simplify psi bar r gamma mu psi l okay so here the chirality mixing terms are identically 0 so what you have over here this guy basically becomes psi bar l gamma mu psi l plus psi bar r gamma mu psi r times m so when a vector field couples to the vector bilinear the vector bilinear has this structure that it always connect the left chiral to the left chiral and the right chiral to the right chiral okay so this is this is another very very important uh, result because uh, the, where do you see gamma mu so gamma mu comes in the free uh, kinetic uh, free uh, theory free Dirac theory in the kinetic term so we have a del slash okay so the del mu gamma mu psi bar psi is there okay so uh, there uh, the gamma mu psi and psi bar if you just write using this thing of course one of the psi is not this usual psi it is a derivative of the psi but that's just a detail then what happens that here you you will be in the kinetic term of the free 
uh, Dirac theory, you will be connecting left carrel with the left carrel and the right carrel with the right carrel. Okay, instead of A mu, you have del mu operator acting on the second uh, of this carrel. You have two fields, the field on the, uh, the second field, the del mu operator acts. Uh, rest of the algebra will look exactly the same. So, kinetic piece in free Dirac theory connects left with left and right with right. And the mass piece, as we saw earlier, uh, will connect left with the right. Okay, and let's continue to move on and talk about the fourth one, the actual vector one. So, sidebar gamma 5, pardon me. Again, make a mistake, gamma mu, psi, a mu. And here again, I can write it as a psi bar L plus psi R and psi bar R. And uh, let me just, okay. Let me get rid of this unnecessary dots. Gamma five, gamma mu, psi l plus psi r and the whole thing multiplied by a mu now what i would do i'll take this gamma 5 across gamma mu and act on psi l so gamma 5 acting on psi l give me minus 1 but there's another minus 1 will come because having the gamma 5 crossing the gamma mu so i'll have psi bar l plus psi bar r gamma mu gamma 5 acting on this will give me minus psi l uh, actually overall minus sign is there so i will remove this sign and minus psi r times a mu okay and again we can see that the only term that will survive is psi bar l gamma mu psi l okay minus psi bar r gamma mu psi r whole thing multiplying with a mu then i i remember i'll remember that i can reintroduce gamma 5 okay reintroduce gamma 5 with changing the sign in the first one and then bringing it across that will bring another sign change so i can write psi bar l gamma 5 gamma mu psi l so there is two sign changes here so no sign change overall and here there is only one sign change so that becomes psi bar r gamma 5 gamma mu psi r m okay so again with the actual uh, vector structure so here this is the this particular bilinear is the actual vector bilinear and this also couples as you can see over here in the last term a left curl with the left curl and a right curl with the right curl similarly the fifth guy uh, the tensor that i will write i will write psi bar sigma mu nu psi and just i uh, just for completeness i'll coupled with another anti-symmetric tensor that we all know f mu nu which is del mu a nu minus del, uh, del mu a mu is anti-symmetric tensor and this kind of term interaction term i can write for a fermion okay so when i have term like this this again overall one can say psi bar l plus psi bar r a sigma mu nu psi l plus psi r f mu nu and let me again show that which term will not survive okay so let's look at psi bar r sigma mu nu psi r here the same clarity will not survive and way to see it that psi bar r is nothing but psi bar 1 minus gamma 5 by 2 then sigma mu nu 1 plus gamma 5 by 2 okay psi this is how we write psi r now sigma mu nu has two distinct gamma matrices and each one of them will anti-commute with gamma 5 so when i'm bringing sigma mu nu to the left hand side of this this term then both of them will anti-commute that means overall it will commute okay so basically what i'm saying is gamma 5 and a sigma sorry 
what I'm saying is gamma 5 and a sigma mu mu anti commute sorry commute okay the gamma have commute with sigma mu mu because of the two gamma structures two gamma mu so that basically brings me side bar sigma mu nu 1 minus gamma 5 by 2 1 plus gamma 5 by 2 times psi and that is 0 so basically this particular term eventually you will have psi bar l sigma mu nu psi r plus psi bar r sigma mu nu psi l whole thing is coupled to f okay so scalar pseudo scalar and this tensor uh, bilinear tend to mix the left and the right chiral guys and the vector and the actual vector do not mix the left and right chiral guy they only connect right chiral to the right chiral and the left chiral to the left chiral so these are the five different kind of interaction terms you can write although there is no limitation to this because you can construct higher order powers of this guy for example you can have other uh, interactions should i write over here itself so yeah so here let me write in a different color so you can go for psi bar psi square you can go for psi bar 1 psi 2 times psi bar 3 psi 4 okay and you know we we have used fears identity so this can be converted into many other things if we require to write it like that okay we can go for so these are all uh, involving four uh, four fermion interactions okay psi bar gamma mu psi so i can write one two in general and psi bar three gamma mu psi four so these are other kind of interactions you can write the important thing is before you can say something to be an interaction it has to have at least three different fields and not necessarily different fields three fields multiplying together in a given term all the uh, free theory will usually have two terms like psi bar and psi appearing so that's still part of the free theory uh, that can be solved exactly but for any interacting theory what we call interactions have to have at least three which is written in the five example where psi bar psi there are only two uh, fermions coupled with something else like a mu it is coupled with in the, uh, this actual vector case in the case of uh, a tensor it, it couples to derivative of a, a single field or f instead of f mu nu, i could have had some other field some other second rank tensor degree of freedom which is coupling to the psi bar psi through the sigma mu nu uh, so sigma mu nu bilinear okay so this is basically the list of uh, uh, interaction terms that we can have and there is no limitation one can go even higher powers of the psi bar psi kind of structures as long as we make the term in the lagrangian to be a lorentz scalar that's the only thing that under lorentz transformation it should be a scalar it should be a singlet only then we can use it uh, only then the Lorentz symmetry will be a good symmetry of the nature otherwise that particular Hamiltonian will violate the Lorentz symmetry that what we don't want now from here we will go on to deal with how uh, to study an interacting field theory once any one of these or maybe more than one of these terms is present in the Lagrangian along with the free Dirac uh, Lagrangian or the Hamiltonian okay so from the next slide onwards we we proceed on to that so for the interacting hamiltonian or the lagrangian uh, let's uh, write the hamiltonian uh, first so total h can be written in h0 or this is the free part plus an h interaction which as we discussed in the previous slide could be like psi by psi uh, phi or other like at least three fields it requires so we can start with the hamiltonians like this segregated in such a way the free part is the part uh, which we just canonically quantized be it the fermion in this uh, course or be it the scalar in the previous course okay 
and H interaction is some kind of interaction. So in, in, in the previous course you have discussed the interaction of the scalar with the scalar. Here we introduce the fermions, so we can have interaction with fermions with the scalar, so fermions with the fermions also we can write, we can write psi by psi whole square, okay, that's a four fermion interaction of the scalar kind and uh, similar things we can have. Important thing to note over here is uh, uh, when we define a field, okay, uh, what we do that we choose a reference frame, uh, some reference time and uh, when the time is fixed all we have is a three space and then we do a Fourier mode decomposition and uh, let me just write it for the case of uh, for the psi field, uh, fermion field. So psi x that we have been writing is d3p by 2 pi q 1 by square root of twice dp sum over alpha a p alpha u alpha of p exponential i p dot x okay plus b p alpha tiger sorry this is v v alpha of p exponential minus i p dot x okay so this was the field so what we did over here we looked at the uh, uh, at a given point of time we used the full set of the complete set of solutions for a given momentum which is the u alpha and v alpha so there are for there are two values of alpha and so they are the uh, total four solutions uh, for a given momenta and then we put the wave functions the traveling wave part exponential ip dot x and exponential minus ip dot x corresponding for positive and negative energy solutions and then uh, we decorated that uh, with this raising and lowering operators so as to say that when this act on the vacuum it creates the a diagrams and b diagrams create a single particle and or single anti-particle states okay so this is how we started our uh, 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 defined our field at some reference point t naught and then so this is my Schrodinger picture okay so here I'm just uh, kind of uh, listing things that you need to know uh, or rather you need to remind yourself from the previous uh, course QFT1 uh, before we uh, go on to the concepts over here so I'm just briefly giving you pointers and then I will just go on to uh, the actual things which is uh, the fermion uh, the 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 Wick's theorem for the fermions and all that okay so what we have that this particular thing is what's called schrodinger picture okay and then we do a time evolution okay when we do a time evolution we go to the heisenberg picture so uh, time evolution using so this is you can call it psi of psi s of x three vector that's a schrodinger picture then time evolution using the hamiltonian gives us the heisenberg picture Uh, let me write it cleanly this is okay and uh, here h uh, stands not for the hamiltonian but for the heisenberg okay so from here to here okay what we did exponential i h T and on the other side exponential minus IHT and then there's the third thing which is a time evolution using H naught and that gives me my psi I of X and T this is called interaction picture so from psi s to psi i, I came through exponential i h naught t. 
okay or maybe i should not write these arrows it can confuse okay. so i can write psi s okay and from here i went to psi h using exponential i h t and like in this way and i go to interaction interaction picture using exponential i h naught t but since it's operator this guys act on both sides not from only one side so what we have is uh, that there's a unity transformation i can write that will connect me from one side or one point to the another point one, one picture to the another picture and that can be written uh, like if i have psi in the heisenberg picture okay point is how can i write in terms of the psi written in the interaction picture and these are all done in the previous lecture all you do that you start here go backwards using the inverse transformation okay and then come forward uh, this way to psi i okay or in other words if i have phi sorry psi so let me write it in yellow psi h okay this is at x and t so what you do you first start with psi i define at x and t uh, have i do i have enough space to write it and move it here yeah. and then you back uh, evolve it so exponential i h naught t minus t naught okay there's no minus sign over here and exponential minus i h naught t minus t naught so you back propagated this i into the schrodinger picture at uh, define at some point reference point t naught i have done this decomposition okay this psi schrodinger and from here this is now i have gone back to the psi s and then from here i come forward so that is forward evolution is exponential minus i total h t minus t naught and here exponential i total h t minus t naught okay so this is how you start from an interaction picture thing and come to the uh, heisenberg picture and, and so on so this particular product of these two guys okay it is usually called u t t naught okay you start from t naught uh, so it's function of two guys so t naught is a reference thing and basically it, it does the round trip between uh, the in, uh, interaction picture and the Heisenberg picture and this satisfies this u uh, is, is your Dyson function that you have studied in, in your previous uh, uh, previous lecture previous course actually so uh, this uh, can also be written uh, only in terms of the interaction picture thing that and all these things has been uh, discussed earlier uh, in the previous course so I'm not going to repeat it those things so important thing that i'm saying that just brush it up from your previous uh, course lecture that uh, how you go around it and how this u of t t comma t naught takes you around and eventually when you write a green's function okay so when, when you write green's function so what do you do so you have interacting theory okay so in, for the interacting theory you have h acting on vacuum is zero this is an interacting theory and h naught acting on this vacuum this is a non-interacting vacuum is zero so this is a non-interacting stuff okay so this is uh, free theory and this is interacting theory okay so the vacuum is, is certainly different once you have changed the hamiltonian there is no reason why the older vacuum will remain the, uh, the new vacuum only thing that we need okay only constraint 
the only assumption that we have is that the overlap between these two Hamiltonian is not null. So the interactions are still perturbative in nature. That this interaction takes the, uh, the free theory vacuum to something else which can be written. Okay, so this can be written as the uh, the the original vacuum up to some normalization. Okay, up to some normalization, the original vacuum plus some sum over all other states. Okay, and uh, not equal to zero, and then you have. Uh, n state which has overlap with vacuum like this okay. so we basically introduce the complete set of things and this overall normalization i'm not talking about what it is okay so this basically you can write the new vacuum in terms of old vacuum and all other states of the non-interactive behavior okay this is just a linear superposition that you did in the perturbation theory so what you did that you start with the eigenstates of the perturbation theory, uh, of the free Hamiltonian, then you write the eigenstates of the full Hamiltonian as a linear combination of the eigenstate of the free Hamiltonian. That's the standard perturbation theory you do. Okay, so under under these kind of assumptions, uh, we work in the perturbation theory, and then we ask a question that give me endpoint Green's function. Okay. So let's just say endpoint Green's function uh, the, is defined in a given theory as uh, this vacuum times time ordered product of phi Hamiltonian picture of x1, phi Hamiltonian picture of x2, all the way till phi uh, Hamiltonian picture of xn. So I'm using, sorry, this is not zero, this is omega. So this is what I want to know and this can be written as the zero of the free theory and the time order product of phi in the interaction picture at x1, phi in the interaction picture at x2 all the way till phi in the interaction picture at xn multiplied by exponential minus i minus capital T to plus capital T D4x so the time axis is from minus T to plus T and space axis are all, all over the space okay and here you have the Hamiltonian density written in terms of the interaction field okay it fills in the interaction picture itself okay it is a function of time usually and here the curly bracket closes this is zero the whole thing is then divided by a zero time order product of exponential minus i this exponential factor minus t to sorry capital t t4x of the hamiltonian density of the interaction part only the interacting part okay and here you can just say this is in the limit t going to infinity times 1 minus i epsilon this i epsilon is very important to make use of these assumptions about the vacuum that we have used so we take the time evolution slightly uh, in, in the imaginary plane and not along the real axis but slightly rotated axis okay and then all the higher modes decay and then i can cup kind of connect uh, the interacting vacuum with the non-interacting vacuum free vacuum only up to a coefficient only up to a constant uh, term i shouldn't say constant only up to a, a fa uh, some some number and that number is is what's eventually sitting in the denominator over here effectively uh, the square of that number i shouldn't say that particular number and uh, yeah so this is just in case uh, uh, you're wondering so you can check the qft1 lecture for this qft1 lecture uh, that you have all supposed to have attended or you can look at peskin's book okay and in the peskin's book 
this is page 87 if in 87 it is a final answer so maybe you should start with early uh, you can start with 82 okay page 82 to 87 okay so how do we evaluate the endpoint greens function in a interacting theory and you can go through that derivation carefully what you will notice is that nowhere have they used the fact that the phi's are actually scarce apart from some places they actually talk about uh, evolving phi's from uh, the scalar sorry the schrodinger picture to a heisenberg picture but those things are exactly identical for fermions as well as for bosons so these things will simply go through uh, for fermions as well and the final uh, interaction final thing would be here instead of uh, phi's over here we'll have phi's and size depending upon whatever the endpoint greens function we are looking for in a given theory okay so let me just box it in yellow so this is going to be a very important formula and why i'm saying this is that i don't know how to talk about how to deal with omega because i don't know what omega is omega is an interacting vacuum for that i need to solve the full theory to complicate it i don't know how to evaluate phi h because to interact to evaluate phi h as you can see I have to evolve using the full Hamiltonian. Now I don't know how full, well I do know, I can compute, it's quite complicated that how full Hamiltonian commutes with A and A diagram. Okay, it will be a complicated expression and if you use a full thing to evolve the A's and A diagrams over here in the Schrodinger picture, uh, you will not get a simple energy dependent phase. Okay, you'll get a complicated stuff, so that will be a very difficult thing to handle. Okay, uh, computationally. Uh, but in the interaction picture what we do we evolve this uh, schrodinger picture using the free hamiltonian and the free hamiltonian of course has a very nice uh, commutation uh, relation with the a's and a diagrams and that, that basically gives the energy dependent phase factor that converts this uh, three vector product into a four vector product okay that's the uh, that's what we will write as the interaction picture so everything in the interaction picture is, is like a free theory okay so on the left hand side of this uh, boxed equation we are looking for vacuum expectation value of a time order product of a bunch of heisenberg uh, uh, picture operators and that can be written portatively in terms of the uh, non-interacting uh, vacuum expectation value so here the zero means the non-interacting vacuum i know how to deal with that and phi i's are all the uh, interaction picture uh, thing so I know how they behave, okay? And even the interaction term, HI, is written only in terms of the uh, uh, interaction picture fields, okay? So everything in, in the right-hand side is written in terms of interaction picture, it's just that it's infinite series because the exponential is an infinite series. So I have to have order by order computation of both numerator and the denominator. And again, this was done using, uh, for the scalar field theory in lambda phi four. Uh, Kaushik did uh, for you in QFT1 uh, for the case of uh, scalar phi, uh, for lambda phi four theory and also he did the what's called the Yukawa model that he said where the two scalars interact and he did uh, some you know uh, uh, scattering cross section computations and all these things. So we'll do all that. Now my point over here is is that what we need for computation and this was the point made by Kaushik as well in his course that if I want to use this formally what I need to know is how to compute the vacuum expectation value of the time ordered product of bunch of fields and there the Wick's theorem was handy okay so what does Wick theorem says in, in, in case of scalars the Wick's theorem was that if you have a time ordered product of a bunch of operators you can write as the uh, in terms of the normal ordered product okay and plus all possible contractions okay so what do we need over there for writing Wick's theorem so let me just write it over here so here first thing uh, to compute end point Green's function or correlation function you can say correlation function we 
need to compute vacuum expectation value of the time order product of phi i o x1 all the way to phi i x n okay and this we do using wick's theorem okay so what wick's theorem says time order product of bunch of field is equal to normal order product of same bunch of field okay so let me just say phi 1 uh, phi 1 means phi i at uh, x1 phi 2 at all the way till phi n this is phi 1 phi 2 phi n okay this is the normal order product of that plus phi 1 phi 2 these are contracted all the way till phi n plus phi 1 phi 2 contracted you know all possible contraction so three things appears over here okay it connects time order product it has normal okay, so maybe i'll just go slow it's time order product means time order product of phi of x phi of y in the case of scalar uh, that we discussed uh, time order product is equal to phi x phi y for x naught greater than y naught and this is equal to uh, phi y phi x when x naught is less than y naught okay then there was a normal order product where the normal order product is defined not in the, for the fields but it is defined for the raising and lowering operator so what normal order product says that a p a q tiger okay or normal order product of this has to be a q tiger a p means all the annihilation annihilation operator to the right and creation operator to the left this is the order okay so the moment n acts on this it returns me this the moment t acts on this product it depending on the time order it returns me this and contraction the third thing that was used contraction this is phi x phi y contraction was nothing but the Feynman propagator okay and not just that the contraction actually was the I should say the, the Feynman propagator means it is also commutative okay so it was basically the phi x phi y commutative Right. And, and of course i shouldn't say the phi x phi y commutator it was uh, only a particular term in it so this co contraction so i, I will i'll describe uh, so this is phi plus and this was minus y or this is for x naught greater than y naught and this was so exactly it was a Feynman propagator okay uh, phi plus y phi minus x for x naught less than y naught so this is how the contractions were defined now when we come to our uh, uh, our time order product that we we want to write so i will use a similar notations for the plus and minus so what plus means that it's part of the field 
okay so here we wrote somewhere the field yeah here the part of the field which has the annihilation operator is called the plus component and the part of the field which has the equation operator that has it's called minus of the field okay so if i have to uh, do this for fermions i will just write the interaction structure for me so i'm not writing the subscript i every time so psi of x so this is the uh, interaction picture and this is given by t3 p by 2 pi q 1 by square root of twice e p okay uh, sum over alpha of a P alpha u alpha p exponential minus i p dot x plus b p alpha tiger v p sorry v alpha p exponential i p dot x these are the four vector products okay uh, this is the full thing which i can say can be written as psi plus okay the first part okay. first part is psi plus and the second part is psi minus so this is all this integral sum over alpha the first part I'll call psi plus because there's the annihilation operator in it okay and likewise okay psi bar of x would be psi bar plus of x plus psi bar minus of x so again the plus means it has an annihilation operator so here uh, psi plus will have a as an annihilation operator and psi bar plus we'll have b as an annihilation operator because the diagram of that okay so uh, here uh, the because of the annihilation operator structure i will say psi tiger of x acting on zero the non-interacting vacuum free vacuum gives me zero this is all the interaction picture thing okay and uh, psi bar plus on a psi bar plus of x an interaction on acting vacuum gives me zero and likewise the creation operators acting on the left hand side also give me zero so i have zero psi minus of x giving me zero and uh, you know psi bar minus of x giving me zero okay so minus will have all the raising operators so when it acts on the left hand side it's same as the complex conjugate of the first expressions roughly okay so these are the relations that one uh, uses here so if i have to use this okay so i have to i have to basically to write down the uh, inter, uh, to write down the wix theorem basically wix theorem doesn't change okay it still says that the time order product is same as the normal order product of with all possible contractions okay so all we have to do is define what is the time order product for the formulas okay so time order is defined in this way t of psi x psi y i'm not putting bar anywhere because uh, basically i can put bar at any one of them okay so i don't want to to say that it is only for this particular case so two fields you take barred or unbarred okay this is equal to time order product of a given pair of field is psi of x psi of y if x naught is greater than y naught and this is equal to minus psi of y psi of x if x naught is less than y that's the first change in the definition okay now next we come is normal order and that is defined as n of let's just say a 
P A Q A R dagger. Okay, so that is you have to bring this AR dagger two steps to the left. So that is minus one to the power two A R dagger A P and A Q. I can leave it like this, but it can also mean that minus one to the power three if I change A R dagger A Q A P because A P and A Q will also anti come when P is not equal to Q. Okay. So this kind here also we are taking care of the anti-commutation relations. Okay, so compare it with the uh, here time order product is just say you just write in the time order. Okay, and for formulas it says no, you write in the same order if the time order if, if it was time order, the your original order was time order, then you write it as, as it is. For any permutation of the time, you permute the fields. Okay, you first write in the proper time order and you also put the sign corresponding to the permutation. So each swap will bring you a minus sign. Okay, same is true for the normal order. So you have to write a given pair of uh, a given string of A's and A daggers in a way that all the daggers comes to the left and all the non daggers or the annihilation uh, comes to the right and the, all the creation goes to the left. And in order to do that, the moment the number of swaps that I make will give me that according signs over there the third thing okay which is the contraction okay so contraction is also defined accordingly okay. so contraction uh, is uh, let me just make sure that i am writing it absolutely correct so first of all, contraction has to happen, between, so it's a propagator kind of thing, okay? So contraction has to happen between uh, psi and psi bar. So let us say contraction of psi of x with psi bar of y, if I'm writing this contraction, so that has to be same as the anti-commutator of psi plus of x with psi bar minus of y if x naught is greater than y naught and minus of psi bar plus of y and psi minus of x and x naught is less than y naught okay and similarly psi x psi y this contraction is zero and psi bar x psi bar y this contraction is zero. it's important to note this because the theorem says all possible contractions so this is one of the possible contraction so you do the contraction and that is actually zero okay additionally we have uh, so one more rule about uh, normal product. So what is the normal product of psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, psi 4 with 1 and 3 contracted? Because this is one possible contraction we have. So what we do is is normal order product, okay? And uh, uh, before using the normal ordering, we first swap this. So psi 1, uh, psi 3 bar and psi 4 bar let's put it so psi 1 psi 3 bar psi 2 psi 4 bar because of the swap it will happen like this and then it becomes minus okay so let me just say that this was all of this uh, was equal to what's called x minus y the propagator uh, each contraction psi x psi y contraction is nothing but the propagator times identity matrix basically okay so this here the contraction psi 1 psi 3 contraction will just become the identity matrix times the propagator and uh, that has no operators that need to be in normal order so that basically brings me s f x1 minus x3 
times normal order product of psi 2 psi 4 bar important thing is this minus sign because the two fields that were contracting uh, were not sitting right next to each other so first we have to bring them right next to each other uh, using the entire permutations and write it like this okay so this is again the way of writing the theorem and we can check this uh, for uh, so our, our theorem remains exactly unchanged and the proof that was uh, shown for this theorem also remains unchanged because all the fermionic uh, feature has been captured in the definition of what is the time order product what is the normal order product and what is called the contraction okay so we we have captured all that in this particular uh, uh, definitions directly uh, so the theorem remains exactly same and if i have to just for example write down uh, the time order product so example okay so let me just go for the example we just say time order product of psi x psi bar y if i had to do for x naught greater than y naught this is equal to nothing but psi x psi bar y now psi x and psi y as i can say can be written in terms of plus and minuses so you can write it as psi plus x uh, plus psi minus x times psi bar plus y plus psi bar minus y okay so let's expand the four cases so psi plus x psi bar plus y okay then psi plus x psi bar minus y plus psi minus x psi bar plus y and psi minus x psi bar minus y these are the four terms now let's see if we are already in the right order so what is this psi plus and psi plus okay so this one psi plus has the annihilation operator and psi bar tiger also has annihilation operator so let me write in a different color so this has a this has b so it's up to us whether we want to flip it or not this is already in the normal order okay then i have term minus minus both are minuses so uh, this has uh, a tiger this is b tiger they are also normal ordered okay now come to this uh, a minus this term here i have a tiger sorry a tiger and here i have b okay this is normal ordered so these three terms i don't have to touch i can just sterically say these are the normal ordered thing okay only this term is not normal ordered because this guy uh, psi plus has a over here and psi bar minus this has b dagger over here okay this one so this needs some correction so how do we do that okay so first of all i will i'm sorry what we will do we will write the term that we want and then add it and then subtract it okay so this is what basically we are going to do add and subtract the term that we need so let's write the problematic term here psi plus x psi bar minus y to which we add psi bar minus y psi plus x this we added and what we do so this we uh, uh, this term we added so it also had to be subtracted psi bar minus y psi plus x so this was a well-behaved term which was added and subtracted 
so this is already normal ordered okay and plus I already have normal ordered of psi plus x psi bar minus y okay plus psi minus x psi bar plus y okay that's all already normal ordered and plus psi minus x psi bar minus y that's also normal ordered so normal order of this guy is nothing but this term itself they are already normal order now what is this extra piece this can be written as plus normal order of psi plus x psi minus y which was the original term okay so normal order of this is nothing but put in the proper order and uh, reverse order and put a minus sign that's how the normal ordering defined so i can just say so this guy what is this guy this is the anti commutation of psi plus psi plus x i'm sorry let me erase it psi plus x psi bar minus y anti commutation plus the normal order of everything else okay and this is nothing but the contraction i was talking about this is psi x psi bar y contraction plus the normal order of the rest of the things okay and this contraction comes with a positive thing because we are already working with the assumption that x naught is greater than y naught so when i work with x naught is less than y naught my first step will be having these two guys in the reverse order with a negative sign okay and everywhere you will save negative sign in reverse ordering the first and the last term still remain in the normal order here the second term which was problematic will be now will have the that will be in the correct order and the third term will become the wrong order and there again and everything is the negative sign so there again we have to add and subtract okay and there what we'll get that there's this entire commutation will have overall minus sign because every term has a minus sign. okay and then this minus sign is already part of the definition of contraction okay. let's look at the uh, previous slide the definition of contraction already have this time dependent minus sign. okay so my entire uh, the theorem which theorem remains as it is uh, the theorem statement remains as it is is the definition of what is time ordered what is normal ordered and what is a contraction all three appropriately change okay so i think uh, we will stop in this lecture over here and in the next lecture we will talk about uh, how we do so the, uh, how do we write uh, instead of vacuum expectation value how do we write uh, the situation when we have the initial state and the final states and uh, uh, basically how do we do a contraction of the fermion field with the single particle states uh, to write uh, to be able to write uh, the matrix elements uh, you have done the matrix element for the scalar case now we need to do the matrix element for the fermion case and uh, in, in near future we will do the same for the gauge bosons but before that we have to study the gauge theory so in the next lecture we focus on how to do uh, matrix elements for the fermionic case what kind of wave function that will pop up what kind of rules that will have in the part of the Feynman rules so that is all for now over here